Gone. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to episode three of Seven Days to Die. Uh, we are still on the recording session that I've been doing since the first episode. So we are starting day three, and I wanted to start by spending the skill point that we got last night, and we are going to throw that into pain tolerance. This is going to reduce HP loss by 5% and lower the chance that we'll be stunned, which is just a nice little tanky boost. Now, we have got some looting to do today. We have a quest 200 meters over there, and I would really like to get this house looted that's just next to us. I, I don't like... It makes me uncomfortable having zombies living next door. You know what I'm saying? But I did also notice that we are low on wood, so we're going to start off the day by chopping down a few trees, and then we'll get to looting some of these houses. All right, we got the wood that we wanted. Now, I think we're going to start here just because, I don't know, it's right next door and I just feel like it. Uh, rather than going in through the traditional route, which would be to climb up onto the roof and head through up there and work our way down, I think we're just going to bust through into what I believe is the kitchen. And see? There we go. See if we can wake up the zombies inside and we'll be able to fight them utilizing our base right here. So we're just going to help them get out and then run back and fight them from behind the safety of the hatch. Come on, ladies. Get up. Let's go, then. Whoa! <laughs> you tricked me there. <laughs> See what you did. You know, I've noticed something. Sometimes I'll go to hit a zombie and it'll just die in one hit. And that always seems to correlate with when the zombie was like beating on a wall for a while, or a door in this case, which leads me to believe, and I should science this at some point, but I think zombies take some damage when they're just like attacking walls. I don't know why, but it seems to be the case. So let's, just, let's let this lady out. And then we should be able to get in there and just take the main loot, empty out our bags, and then we'll clear the whole place like normal. Nice and safe and clear in here. Let's just close this door to be on the safe side. Grab all of this good, easy stuff. Got some food there. That's excellent. And once again, I'm tempted to leave this working stiff tools crate here for later, but I think I'm just going to open it and hope for a higher level axe. Nope, just a shovel. Should have left it. That's fine. Got some tea, some glue. Let's see what's in the main chest. Hey, we got a mod, a bow upgrade. Nah, nothing amazing, but nothing terrible either. I think we're gonna stick with the military gloves. We're just gonna scrap those. Scrap our old bow in that chair, and we can throw this armor mod into our chest. That's just going to make us a little tiny bit tankier. Ammo pile, come on, blunderbuss. Nope, no blunderbuss. Well, we did get another wrench, and it's always worth looking at your wrenches uh, to see what their block damage is. The one we have been using does 35 block damage, and this one does 38. So it's worth remembering that not all wrenches are created equal. So we did actually get a wrench upgrade there. And we are going to need an extra wrench to craft our workbench once we get that recipe unlocked. I'm just going to take apart all these kitchen appliances for electrical parts and whatnot. Once this fridge is broken down, we're going to drop off all of this stuff we just picked up and do the rest of this house. Going to eat some bacon and eggs and drink some red tea while we're here. And uh, as you can see, red tea is just a lot better than regular water. That's why I went through the effort of picking all that chrysanthemum. Uh, plus 15% stamina regen for 4 minutes and 15% efficient digestion, which just means we're going to go through less food, which is just a good thing. Oh, we got a friend. Oh, that was too close. That was too close. Hi, buddy. You almost got through that door. That would have been bad for me. Bad for my health. One more should finish him off. Excellent. Alright, we're heading upstairs. We're just going to try to be a sneaky boy. Block off all these doorways, because 
I'm positive we have some friends up here. And we should be good. Alright, come on, get up then. That's just fine. We can deal with this. Just gotta keep an eye on the health bars of these blocks, just like that. Nice and easy, we can take care of this. Ooh, we got two books in there. Do 10% more damage to humans, that's useless, PvP only. And you can craft drum magazine mods. Oh, that's gonna come in really handy later. We won't be able to make those for a long time, but once we get the highest tier of shotgun, the, I want to say it's an auto shotgun, uh, <laughs> with a drum magazine mod, it holds like 32 shotgun shells. It's actually insane. So that, that's a really good find there. So there is an attic in this place, and I don't love getting up there like this, but I think... I think it's not going to work, is what I think. Ooh, we found some pink dye. Let's put that on our club. Oh, isn't it cute? <laughs> uh, so we had to beat our way through the wall, because I want to get up into the attic of this place. But we started from the end and are working our way backwards, so it's a little bit awkward. But that's okay. We found this ladder, which leads up to the attic. This is normally where we would have started. And I'm sure we're going to have a friend up here. There they are. Let's just get down. And try and find a door to hide behind. Hopefully they follow us. We might have gone a little... Whoa! There he is. <laughs> you sneaky, cheeky fucker. Alright, let's deal with this guy. Check the attic for loot. And then get out of here. Alright, that's it for here. We found 10 grain alcohol, which is nice. That'll sell for decent. And a whole bunch of radiators, which will sell also for decent. Other than that, we didn't really find anything too impactful other than the drum magazine mod. So let's pop off back to our home. And throw all this stuff into storage. And move off to our quest for the day for Jen. And you know, I'm actually going to grab... All of our glass jars. I'm not sure if there's any water sources around here, but it sure would be nice to get those filled up with water. And I know there is a river to our east a little ways. So we'll try and get those filled up at some point. Ah, this house. So this is our quest for the day. And I was talking a little bit in the first episode about how I had died a couple times and had to start the series over. The first failed series from a death was in this POI. I just did something really stupid down in the basement. Um, now, we could do something called double looting, where we loot the house, then we come out here and start the quest, and then everything resets, and we're able to do everything twice. But I don't really like double looting. Like, it's, it's really good, don't get me wrong, but I think it's kind of immersion-breaking, and just kind of an exploit that I personally don't want to do. So we're going to come out here... And we're going to break down this AC unit, and that should wake up a couple of flamey boys inside. And we should easily be able to kill them through the wall. Which is nice. So let's just figure out which blocks they're attacking and kind of help them out a little bit. There's number one. Let's just put a frame down here just to make life a little bit easier. That's one down. Stop jumping like an asshole. Oh my gosh. You're making this take longer than it needs to. Ah, turn that off. And that's two down. All right. We have a workbench here. Unfortunately, it is destroyed, but we can still take it apart and get some forged iron, among other goodies. We've actually got a couple of friends out here. Let's just let this guy in and we're going to run back through that door we just came through fight him there no reason to risk it come on jump there you go let's close that pop a frame down right here 
He should be joining us momentarily. There he is. You did so good. That's so proud. Then there was just a little crawler over there that we're going to take care of. There we go. Alright, now we have a couple of friends down in this basement area. And this right there is where I died. That first time I tried to do this, so we are just not going to make the same mistakes. Let's pop a frame down right there. We should have one friend right around that corner. Well, two friends, really. So let's put a frame right there, there, and there. That should be pretty safe. Let's get that out of the way. Put a frame there. And then I think we should be able to spot him once we get this box out of the way. Well, maybe he didn't spawn there this time. Let's try checking in the cabinet. We actually got double, double in there. That's just fine. Um, this is kind of awkward because he can still jump up and get over, which I don't like. Maybe, maybe we should just frame in something like that. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> How many shots does it take to hit a stationary sleeping zombie? Apparently, three. Because I am bad. Get up. Yeah, you're doing so good. There we go. Let's get the other guy. If I can... Man, I cannot shoot today. Alright, we have dealt with the zombie threat. Now let us loot this area. We got some more cobblestone down here, which is excellent. We still have a lot of reinforcing to do to the base. Plus a whole horde base to build. So we're going to need a lot more cobblestone. So it's important that we keep this stuff flowing in. So I'm just going to get this all looted up and then we'll head upstairs. found some BDU leggings. These are my preferred leggings, so we're going to take those, equip them. Uh, we got some steroids, some grain alcohol, scrapped a bunch of stuff, which is excellent, but we also have this pass and gas crate, which could potentially be the star of the show. These have a chance to contain quite a lot of repair kits in them on occasion, and yes, 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 16 repair kits. Don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and take these frames with us. No sense in leaving the wood behind. And let's get upstairs and see what else we can find. I definitely heard a growl. Not sure where it came from, though. So we're just going to have to be on alert as we proceed. Hello? Who made that noise? Let's crouch down. Maybe there's one in there. No? Where are you? Oh! It's above us. It sounds like a crawler, almost. Huh, there's multiple buzzards up there. What the heck? Strange. Alright, we gotta, we gotta keep going. If he shows up, we'll just deal with him. And yet another wrench. We are just finding all the wrenches this playthrough. That it does 33 block damage, so definitely not an upgrade for us. We will probably turn that one into iron. 90 iron for a wrench is very nice. Definitely nothing to shake a stick at. Oh, there we go. Oh, dear. Let's just jump up here. Um, What can we do here? Let's put that there and that there. Maybe we can hit him from over here. That works out. Scared me. He came running real fast. Oh, my gosh. We found a cigar. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. We spent a thousand coin buying one. 
you hate to see it, but we can at the very least sell that cigar we just found to the trader for, you know, a decent amount, 110, so definitely would have been better to have found that, but it's better than nothing, we'll put it that way. Ooh, improved fittings mod, or uh, customized fittings mod. This is a very underrated mod that I don't see people getting excited about enough. It improves your stamina per second and increases your mobility. And once you're all loaded up with heavy armor like we're going to be in the near future, uh, it really makes a big difference when you get uh, a bunch of those, get like one of those on each piece of your armor. Like I've done the science before and compared what it's like running with full heavy armor on with and without those mods. And there's like a 30-35% difference in like how far you can go before your stamina actually runs out and you're moving quicker. So just really, really good mods all around. Definitely always nice to find. All right, we have one more zombie left to fight. And fun fact, the zombie will break through the ceiling right here, but if you put some frame blocks up there, uh, it can't, <laughs> which I thought was kind of an amusing way of dealing with it. Uh, oh, geez, we're out of frame blocks. Let's just craft like 20 more of those. We're just going to kind of frame ourselves in here. Then we'll walk on this garbage, and that should wake our friend up. He'll come around here, and we can... Oops. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We just got so lucky. <sighs> Did you see that? Our freaking... <laughs> Our hammer was damaged or broken, so I wasn't able to repair the block, and he freaking broke it. But he didn't come in here for some reason. He just decided to beat on the blocks. We just got so lucky. If a Mo had gotten in here with us, that very well could have been the end of the series. <sighs> Beautiful. Let's pick up all of these frame blocks. And see what goodies the Seven Days to Die gods have for us. Uh, once again, Shotgun Messiah... Great. Probably should leave this here until we're a higher game stage, but I'm just not going to bother. Two repair kits. I'll take it. There's nothing wrong with that. A little bit of blunderbuss ammo. 762. Don't mind that. And that is the third steroids we've found in this place. I think a uh, gym rat used to live here. And let's see what's in the big chest. We have got some armor. Nice. A club upgrade. A bow upgrade. That is all fantastic stuff. Let's throw those leggings on. Uh, let us bring down this level 3 bow. Scrap these. And was there anything else in there? Yes, the weapon. Let's go ahead and move our die and our mod over to our level 3 club. Scrap him, bring him down, and that actually gives us an extra mod slot. So once we find a nice melee weapon modifier, we can mod our melee weapon. Obviously... Uh, is there anything on the roof here? Sometimes you'll find, like, little purses or little goodies hidden up here, but not today. It's okay. These vultures are making me uncomfortable, man. Well, nothing left to do now but head home, grab all of our goodies to sell, and go say hi to Jen. I think I'm actually going to waste the coin and use one of these steroids. That's going to eliminate all of our encumbrance for 10 minutes and increase our movement speed. So we're just going to get to Jen's a little bit faster. Let's check the old vending machine. Hackers, salvage harvest, that's a little tempting. Rock busters. Mm, tempted to buy both of these and jailbreakers. Um, oh, you know, did I forget my coin? Whatever. We can get some coin from all the You're stuff that we're about job. to sell. That's just I fine. You could do it. Hunter's Journal, 10% more damage against vultures. Meh, but we can sell it. Let's check her jobs. We've got a buried supplies. Uh, yeah, I could do one more do buried hurry. supplies. I have a protection payment coming up soon. Let's go ahead and sell all this stuff. And I know selling 7.62 and 9mm is not 
the smartest thing, but really, I'm just, I'm a shotgun guy, and I don't feel like I'm going to be utilizing that ammo for a while, so I would rather have the coin right now. And Jen does reset tonight, so we need to do one more look at what we need to buy. We definitely want that Art of Mining book. Fuck off, cornmeal. Tempted to buy those eggs, actually. That's a lot of eggs. They're not that expensive, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we could buy the Lucky Looter Goggles. That is definitely tempting. If we don't see anything else, we'll get those. Uh, would also be nice to get a Grandpa's Awesome Sauce. When we go to buy our motorcycle for 20k, this is going to knock off 20%, so it's sort of an investment in our future. I might actually get that over the Lucky Looter Goggles, but that is a difficult decision. Maybe we have enough coin for both. I can't remember if I brought the coin from our base. All right, that is a difficult decision, but I think I'm going to go with the Grandpa's Awesome that Sauce. That is going to pay for itself. And... We might yet be able to pick up some other goodies. Let's go try and do this Buried Supplies quest real quick. Uh, I'm, I've also got my glass jars with me today, 47 of them. And fortunately, this is bringing us over to the river, which is exactly what I wanted. And we should be able to fill those up. Come here, little bunny. Come here, little bunny. Oh, come on. Little bitch. All right, let's fill those up nice and good. An unfortunate thing I didn't consider about taking those steroids is that it actually makes you thirsty. Um, so we are a little bit dehydrated right now, which is gonna reduce our maximum stamina slightly and our stamina regeneration, which is not a great time to have that be the case since we're about to dig a big old freaking hole. But, you know, just got to roll with the punches. Maybe we'll get lucky here and find some water. Nope. And we could drink the dirty water. I haven't drank dirty water in a long time. 12% chance of dysentery. Do we risk it? 12%? Yeah, let's go. Oh, no dysentery. All right, hopefully that will take us out of the red. Let's start digging. Get this done as quick as we possibly can. Well, we keep finding these treasures so quickly. Uh, there was a tip I wanted to tell you guys the, the last time we were digging one of these up. Uh, while you're digging a hole, try putting frame blocks over your head. It could save your life. I have had wildlife, like wolves, wander over to my hole before and fall in there with me. And I've also had that exact same thing happen while I had frame blocks up. And they'll just sit up there and kind of stare at you. So, a uh, useful little tip could save your life. Let's go ahead and upgrade this block all the way to reinforced wood. See what's in the box. We've just got some basic food and other goodies. And because we have been drinking dirty water, rolling the dice, let's go ahead and chug some of this regular water. Eat this food while we're at it, because we are getting real close to hungry. And we'll deal with these zombies momentarily. Looks like we only have three small zombies. Nothing we can't handle. We ended up getting five zombies. Not a big deal, though. Let's head back to see Jen get our reward. And see if there's anything else we can buy from her before she resets tomorrow. Here's your pay for a job well done. Oh, three first aid kits? Or 10% more sneak damage at night. Well, as we can't really sneak at night very much because we're going to be fighting a horde, we're definitely going to go for three first aid kits. And these are the best healing items in the game. They are very, very strong, so that's an excellent find. Let's go ahead and take this. Uh, gosh, do we want to do another buried supplies? Not really. Let's go ahead and take this fetch quest. What direction is that in? Uh, uh, yeah, we can head up that direction. Um, let's see if there is anything else we can buy before she resets tonight. I think we're going to go for the lucky looter goggles. They're only plus three, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, not the best you can get, but it's a start, 
and I will take it. We need to get home. The zombie horde is going to be showing up soon, and I would like to get a little bit of work done on the base before it gets here. Uh, something else I like to do is mark the nearest ore node of each type around my base. So I've got some coal right here. So I want to mark that on the map. I know I've got an iron over here. So next we'll need to find a nitrate powder and a lead. And then once we start to dig our little mine shaft underneath our home, this is iron, we know which directions we want to dig in. And hopefully we don't have to dig, you know, four separate tunnels. Like sometimes you'll you'll tunnel over to your iron and you'll end up finding all four of the resources that you want all, all in one beautiful glory hole. We have two skill points. Let's go ahead and put one of those into strength, bringing us up to three with our cigar. And let's go for sexual Tyrannosaurus rank two. This is going to further reduce the stamina cost of attacking with our melee weapons and our tools. And we're also going to start to get stamina back on killing blows. Uh, so that's just going to help us get through the hordes a little bit faster. We went ahead and reinforced the bottom layer all the way around our base. So just a bit more durable now. And uh, I'm just going to chop down some trees, get a little wood while we're waiting. Get this swing set out of the way. Whoa, 1,000 HP? Maybe not. Yeah, screw it. Let's get it out of the way. Oh my god. That's a wandering horde. <sighs> Holy shit. That scared the hell out of me. <coughs> Something in my throat. <coughs> wandering hordes on Insane Nightmare are terrifying as you can see it's just like a pack of 10 zombies and they're rather than you know when zombies are on nightmare speed they're just walking around until they aggro but wandering hordes are always running like they're always in motion and you just you hear the pitter patter and you're like oh i aggroed one zombie you turn around and there's freaking 10 zombies sprinting towards you it is just the scariest thing in the world but you know what? That's okay. We had just enough stamina to get back into the base. And we are going to get a little bit of extra XP for this, which I don't mind at all. And we did actually just level up right before that happened. So we're going to put that point into Pummel Pete rank 2. We are now a thug. And that's just going to allow us to hit a little bit harder with our melee weapon, which is obviously our bread and butter, which is just a good thing. And here comes the horde. Whew. Things are starting to get spicy, boys. Things are starting to get spicy. You know, I would love to utilize one of these Molotov cocktails. Let's go ahead and repair this. Then we're going to try and get up on the roof real quick. And we're going to try and tag all these zombies. Excellent. And that is going to do a lot of work for us. I don't think a Molotov alone will kill a zombie on insane difficulty. I haven't actually tested it, but it is going to soften them up quite a bit. Look at that XP roll in. They are just not letting up. Uh, our iron supply is holding strong, though. We still have 600 iron, so we are in no danger of them getting through. My god, they are still coming. We must have killed at least 20 by now. I think I'm gonna use one more Molotov. Go. That should get them all nice and toasty. Just let the stamina regen while they burn. Did we cross some kind of 
game stage threshold that I'm unaware of because just last night we only had like six zombies total. Tonight we must have killed at least 25 by now. And I keep thinking, okay, it's over. And then more show up. I mean, the XP is nice. We've almost got a level just from the horde tonight. So I'm not complaining. It's just kind of shocking. Oh man, they actually managed to break one of the blocks up there. We'll repair that in a moment. Jeez. Alright, I think that's finally it. Gosh, that must have been... I mean, including the Wandering Horde, which we do have to account for. I was probably closer to... 30 zombies? Maybe more? That is a lot of zombies for a day 3 horde. My goodness. Well, we got a lot of XP. And we only had to use two Molotovs and some of our Blunderbuss ammo, which is fine. That's what it's there for. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Uh, I got to keep busy until 4 a.m. Or else, if I log out the horde will reset, and I don't really want to fight that horde again. <laughs> At least not until tomorrow night, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to harvest some wood, uh, just, just do some basic stuff, and uh, we'll pick it up here on the morning of day four. Thanks for watching, guys. I love your face. I'll see you next time. Bye.